She's April. And she's Molly. And we are... The Book Besties. Reading this book is like being duct taped to a chair with wheels and shoved down a steep hill into eight lanes of oncoming traffic. This person was paid to review it before they actually physically read it. No stars for you, sir. And that's all you need to know about this book. It's 90s CBGB. No. Matt's been on nights for a long time. I hated this book. Zero out of five stars. I'm pretty sure we are the book besties. <laughs> I think we need Tom to put together a clip show of, of, of our outtakes. Of that? <laughs> okay, in my defense, I have had the foggiest brain all week. I've been homesick all week. Molly, you said she's Molly and then looked at me like, why aren't you saying the next part? Like, <laughs> My brain turn. is not working. I told you I have been sick all week. Like, like that's not what we say. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. Like, all right. I, I forgot my name. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> she's Molly. She's Molly. Yes, yes like, she is. Nope. Try again. <laughs> yes, you are Molly. <laughs> I should be like, she's Molly. That doesn't work. They can't see you. She's Molly pointing at face. Audio description. <laughs> you are so That's funny. April. Audio description. Oh we are Jazz Hands Book Besties. <laughs> so I'm assuming you haven't missed me this week then. <laughs> I've had a really busy week at work. Things Girl, have you have. A little chaotic. We uh, launched a new... Um, tech system and so it's just been really busy because you know we're learning the tech system the patrons are learning the tech system but i have to say it's so much better than our last system so Good. i'm really happy with the change yeah that's awesome mm -hmm. yeah i worked tuesday and i sounded like this and i was making my phone calls and i hung up and my boss goes molly you sound like a man i was like i'm sorry swapna <laughs> she's like you feeling okay? I'm like, totally fine. Totally fine. And it's five o'clock rolls around. And she's like, why don't you call me and tell me how you're feeling in the morning? And I woke up like death the next day. And she's like, yeah, you stay home till you're better. So does she have you like, how does this work since you're part time? Do you make up your hours or do you? She's she just, just, she's just giving me the day off. She's not going to pay me. I'm not going to get oh. paid, but she's not going to dock me either. You know, well, that's good. Well, she's immunocompromised too. So, mm, so she it's has probably better that you're she, not there. Well, she understands. She is yeah. RA like me. So like, oh, we would just wow. be passing it back forth till end of time. Right. Yeah. Like there's yeah, just I'm no point because nobody in this freaking house has it. My throat has been red and scratchy and nasty. And I've had this post. Well, bullshit. Maybe Katie was right about why you have it. <laughs> no. Matt's been on nights for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I got that message <laughs> like an hour after she sent it because I was so busy today and I was like what these the are the people going I've on? chosen to be friends with <laughs> these are my people I just picked them and the fact that I didn't like get defensive instead <laughs> I just double down <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> do you want to talk about this trash can book <sighs> I really don't, but we kind of have to, but I'm going to keep my bell very close this week. And you owe me additional romance novels next season. Um, because no, because shows. you're complaining about the book after this. So I feel like we're even. The book after this is a fan suggestion, so I cannot take credit for it. You picked this. Mm, okay. But we're going to talk about why I picked this. Okay. Okay. But we probably should say the title. Okay. <laughs> this. <laughs> I swear to God, guys, I'm here. I'm sober too. This is sober. I'm just dead to the world. This book, this week's book is No One Is Left Coming For You from Sam Lipstein. Lipston? That's not what it's called. It's No One Left To Come Looking For You by Sam Lipsight. The English language and I are not friends. I got you. Said the writer. My little dyslexic friend. No One Left To Come Looking For You by Sam Lipsight. Fucking whatever. How about a synopsis? Is that a yes? I don't think I have a choice. Uh, 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 okay. I mean, we could just say 
This is it. Thank you for listening to Book Besties. <laughs> Come back next time. No. Okay. I don't, I don't think we could do that. We actually did both finish this book, as opposed to the other ones that we were like, nah. Like, we probably should have DNF this book, guys. I mean, it's not that get, long, so... We're going to get to why in a little bit. Um, in this fever dream of mid-1990s, specifically 1993-1994, when this is set, in the rock punk New York City, we meet Jonathan, excuse me, Jack Shit, of the shits. You know them. That's right, the you shits. know who I'm talking about, the shits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He is searching for his... Missing band Nate and lead singer, the Earl. And of course, his missing bass went, his bass went missing around the same time. How about them apples, huh? Um, as we follow Jack around New York City, we meet a plethora of supposedly famous people from this era. I don't fucking know. I really thought, we'll get to that. Um, it's post punk. Right. Oh, right. But it's not real it's yeah. it's 90s cbgb um, yeah but it's not but it's not we meet a plethora of folks from his world hera an ex-drummer and ex-lover of the earl who now does new music whatever that means toad maltov it yes. sounds like her band is like the white stripes but no anyway. toad maltov maltov being his real last name who we don't meet until the day of his murder, but we hear a shit ton about him. Um, oh, spoilers, guy. This guy gets murdered. Uh, yeah, Cutwell, but not even the main... He's not even the main mystery. He's not even, it's, he, not a, it's not even important. It's not it's about not him. It's not about him, even. He's um, just a victim along the way. Cutwolf, a guitarist who just wants the band to stick together. Um, and this tale, we somehow have a murder... Donald Trump and experimental art with period blood. Oh, Are you ready for the fucking questions? <sighs> Molly, on more than one occasion in this book, I almost threw up. Mm, solid. Solid. There, not... there, is, there is a scene that takes place in a men's room yeah. that stinks. And the... Yeah. The descriptors are so, so gross. Nasty. And I have like real issues with mm -hmm. poop. Like I'm really, really uncomfortable with it. And yeah. I was gagging. Mm. Almost threw up. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. I was sorry to hear it too. Cause I was listening to the audiobook, Which was read by the author. Yeah. Okay. I just want to read this review. Uh huh. On the front by Steven Sordenberg. Mm -hmm. Reading this book is like being duct taped to a chair with wheels and shoved down a steep hill into eight lanes of oncoming traffic. In other words, my ideal reading experience. That's not at all how I felt about this book. I mean, it does feel like being duct taped to a chair with wheels <laughs> and, and shoved down a steep hill in, in eight lanes of oncoming traffic, but not, Against your will. not my ideal reading experience. Okay. Um, it's bad. I I have two questions. I'm going to kind of combine them for this part. I'm glad Let's, you were able to come up with any questions. Cause I um, was concerned. Barely, barely friend. Let's right. get this over with. I picked this because of a TikTok. convinced me. It was amazing. Punk rock murder thriller comedy. The, the TikToker made it sound like it was this beautiful tale of just like being in it. Right. Like that's how he made it feel. He was like, this is the book to make you and like, he made it feel like you were getting this historical history book, okay, of this punk rock world, and it had a murder mystery, and it was really funny. That's how he described it. So I screenshot it, saved the picture, so I could have it on my list, right? But that's not the book you and I read. So let's no. air out our grievances now. This I mean, I wasn't even sold on the concept when you told me it was historical fiction, or a mystery like that right there. That's not for me, but I at least gave it a chance because this type of music is, is stuff I'm still listening to today yeah. is what I like. Okay. Yeah. I, I, um, I, 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 I jam. Uh, I'm down. Mid, I'm mid nineties punk scene and leading into it. the early aughts emo mm -hmm. scene. And I mean, I'm wearing Andrew McMahon today. Right. Like, like I'm wearing my shirt today. He's, uh, 
late just, 90s, early aughts punk scene. This just feels like it was written by an outsider or somebody that was dreaming of being in this scene. <laughs> and Okay, so the, you know this episode of Grey's Anatomy? Because, you know, it always comes back to Grey's Anatomy. Yes, it always there's an episode of Grey's Anatomy where there's, like, a biker gang, and they got into an accident, and, like, yes. there's, like there's, like, a chick that's, like, the head of the biker gang. Yes. And she just wants to get to the guy who got hurt, who happens to be, like, their accountant. Yeah. And he's, he's like, Road fully, rash. Thank you, man. Yeah, he's, like, fully an outsider, right? He's not the bo- biker gang kind of guy. He's an he's accountant. Their accountant. Yeah. He this book was written by the accountant. This this book was written by the accountant. Mm-hmm. This book was written by the accountant. This isn't even his first book. No, that's actually perfect segue. Thank you, April. Sam Lipston is a multi-published author. Lipsight. Lipsight. God damn it! You're gonna say his name in the closeout. Sam Lipsight is a multi-published <laughs> author and screenwriter. The film aired in 2009. This book shows that not everyone is for everyone. What movie? Um, his movie was called. Hold on, let me pull it up. It it, it was filmed in Spanish. I want to say. Let me pull it up. IMDb. Um, it was. He teaches at Columbia University. Of course, he fucking does. I hate this guy. Um. Tell a story of unreal love, love, and loss. I cannot say this word. I N S O A C with a weird th- A with a weird th- O. I'm just going to put it in the here. This I'm not is going to know what you're talking about anyway. That word. That's the name of the fucking movie. I don't know Spanish, so no. I don't know Spanish either. We'll just put it below. We'll put it in the diddly doos. Okay. Mm-hmm. But like, he's. A guy guy. Like, he's the guy guy. Like, he does all the things. How? Who's reading this? I'm angry about this book. I'm angry this book exists. I'm angry this book was published and so many books that I've enjoyed. So many authors. So many authors. Do you know how much shelf space this is taking up? Well, none for me because I checked it out from my library. So I'm going to return it. Can you see how his style of writing would appeal to others, though? Like, I can see how people could get into this. Like, no, I honestly me. can't, Molly, because the the punk scene that he's writing about this isn't even appealing to the people who were a part of that. Like, okay, there's no I, story. It is I, utterly pl- pointless. I screenshot you a review. Do you remember it? Yeah, this I still review, like my review better. Your review is better, but that's. We'll talk about that at the end. (laughs) This woman says, if the comic guy from The Simpsons wrote about being in a band, this would be the book. And that's all you need to know about this book. You know what this book reminds me of? What does this book remind you of? It reminds me of Adventures in Babysitting. Oh my God. I love that movie. It's I do too, but it's an absolutely pointless mystery all night long, right? Right. And never gets to a fucking point. You're like, I don't, what the hell? Where's, what are we doing? She's got the babysitter blues. And it's great. (laughs) But, and Anthony Rapp is in that movie too. Um, But that movie was able to take a nonsensical night. Yeah. And make something good. Yeah. You know what? Have you ever read Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist? I haven't read that. Nick and Nora's Infl- Infinite Playlist is a, a shorter YA novel. Mm-hmm. It's probably only like 150, 200 pages. And it's wonderful. It is a great book. Um, the movie is actually a really good adaptation. And side note, the reason that I write my husband's name with an H in it, T-H-O-M, is because of that book. Nice. But anyway, I was reading it when we were for, when we were first corresponding via email. And- nice. Anyway, um, that book is a mystery that happens in one night and it's all like nonsensical and it's wrapped in a mu- music scene. Right. And it's really good. Mm-hmm. This book failed to be that. I just, I never liked the main character. I never felt his Why was he just or- fine with being covered in period blood? He was like, yeah, sure, I'll do that. Because it's punk rock, man. What? How? 
he in his mind. Um, the thing no, of this it book, wasn't about being punk rock. It was about the VJJ and nailing that chick. Mm-hmm. Um, the the theme of this book is I am punk rock and fuck everything else, or it feels like there isn't anything else really to it. Uh. What? Do you know anybody that would enjoy this book? Like, could you Mm-mm. be like, I, Mm-mm. I honestly Mm-mm. can't think of a single person I can give this book to. Mm-mm. No, me either. Like. I actually have a friend who's into this music scene a lot, too. And I wouldn't even give it to him because I don't think he'd like it either. I'm trying really hard. We're 15 minutes in and like it's pulling teeth like this. This book was hard, guys. Like, yeah, this this is like season one hard. Um, it's just it wasn't good. It wasn't. It was good. not good. And <laughs> here, I, I'm going to keep going and see if we could just push through. This story is, this is probably going to be our shortest episode ever. ever. This story is pretty weird. We have a junkie missing lead singer, a bass missing, a drummer who has quit, a mi- messy love lives throughout this. Mm-hmm. Um. Hating on everyone, like they hate everything. Mm-hmm. Like they, 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 they hate liberals. They hate fascists. They hate the far right. They hate the, fu- they hate fucking everybody. They're just angry at everyone for no reason. Mm-hmm. Um, do you feel like there was a direction that he, the author had a direction and lost it along the way, or do you think this was always just going to be a mess of a book? Before I answer that, I need to look something up real quick. Okay, because I think I'm right, and I need to defend it. Okay. I'm not right. Okay. Um, I think a lot of this book was released uh, at, with Trump as a target. And we've talked about our political affiliations on here before. And we're actually going to talk about that in another question. The okay. The Trumps of it all. Well, I think that he was trying to be super left. Oh, yeah. I completely and, agree. But... It, you, as someone in his super left, doesn't even like this book. I, so. I'm really mad about the Trump part of it, and I actually have a question about it, and I want to get to that. I, the thing is that I feel like the intended audience for this are the people who saw Rent in its first run. It, this is like a 13-year-old trying to write Rent at home. Mm-hmm. This is a fourteen-year-old th- boy writing Rent at Home. Mm-hmm. That's I mean, all this they, is. There's still AIDS in it. Um, they talk about AIDS in it. They talk about Andy dirty Warhol needles. for some fucking reho. Yeah, like there's a chick that sells clean needles. It's mm-hmm. all, um, it's just it reaches, and that's actually a good part of my next question. As an attempt to show some depth to our main character. Mm-hmm. We go home with him to spend time with his parents. I mean, he was going to get his base, mm-hmm. but he has dinner. He, he fights with his mom. He sleeps in his old bedroom. He talks about masturbating and looking at the old water holes, like the water spot on his room and how his mattress and the colors haven't changed. And I see what the author was trying to do. I really do. Like, or I feel like I think I know, but I don't get it. Do you? Like, it, did that feel like, and that's where the story actually turned for me and I kind of started getting angry, is that meat <laughs> dinner. It took you that long to be angry about it? Oh, I, I just, was angry much earlier. I was just, there um, was no point. So I think that the point of the family thing was to talk about the old generation and new generation, which is a central theme in this book. Right. The old generation of punk rock versus the current generation of punk rock. Right. And... <clears throat> I mean, it alludes to what would come next, which probably would have been like the early aughts emo Mm -hmm. um, pop The shits weren't never doing that. You know who they remind me of? Jesse Camp. Do you remember Jesse Camp from MTV? They don't remind me of that. That, Like this just, (laughs) hey man, Mm -mm. I'm not fully there, man. No, they are the 98 degrees of the mid 90s alt. Facts. 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 Like everyone else was doing it better, but the formula worked. So we got to try again. We got to try it. We got to try it. Um, At dinner, I'm saying I'm a lot at this dinner. At dinner with his folks, his aunt brings her current boyfriend. 
famous writer, supposed mm-hmm. to be somebody fucking regionally important, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, Who also <laughs> dated his mom. For while, half a second, yeah. Well, she and the her dad, dad were, were split up. Hashtag small towns. Um, rambling right. about being turned... He, this guy starts rambling about being turned into a computer eventually. Um, hating on those who have read his book. Uh, most, but mostly he bashes Donald Trump and all of these builders in 1994 mm-hmm. in New York. Like That's why I think of rent. Right. Um, now we all know my politics. Mm-hmm. And we don't always, you and I don't always agree on things. Mm-hmm. We've always been honest about that. But mm-hmm. even me, a non Trump fan, could I see, don't like Trump either, just right. so we're clear. Okay. <laughs> um, but me, a non Trump fan, non Trump fans here, could see that this was just the author's attempt to sway the readers toward his political beliefs. Yeah. That's why I checked the copyright because I was thinking it came out around the um, last election, mm-hmm. but it was 2022. This so a, a is where he starts. This is where he starts talking about Trump. It's like halfway. And this or at least a third. here on is all bitching about Trump. Okay, I want that known. This mm-hmm. truly has no. And Trump ends up being a bad guy too. Right. Like... He's a, it, which is my next question. This this truly had no basis in the book, in my opinion. Like him taking his political beliefs and turning this into a villain, really really sat with me wrong. So what do you think? I think this book would have been better if our main character actually did drugs because then it would have made sense. Like put him on Coke or Jack Jack doesn't do drugs. The one time that he got super, super high, he went to the police and turned himself in for some, for snorting carpet cleaner. (laughs) They thought he murdered someone. And he was just like, no man. I've been doing too many drugs. <laughs> so they basically just leave him in the interrogation room to sober up. They don't even book him or anything. They just leave him in there and then. But how many leave. times in New York City do you think they get that? Just like guys from I like fucking Iowa who have their f- first bump of cocaine and they're like, put me in jail, man. <laughs> Why has it got to be someone from the Midwest? Because it's always Midwest guys that have the good gold, heart of gold. That go to New York City to find themselves. Have you not read any books? I've read a lot of books. <laughs> Including this stupid fucking one. Mm-hmm. Including so, five, four and a half seasons worth of books with you. Facts. So. so as this book goes on, Trump and his goons become the main villains of this book. Surprise! Okay. Mm-hmm. To the point of the climax at an ice rink outside of Trump's towers. Just, it's weird because at this time Trump wasn't like he wasn't a thing. He wasn't yeah. on TV. No, he was. He was a thing. He was really well known, but he was like not. I mean, they talked about him on um, Friends, the episode right. where Joey finds out about Chandler and Monica. It's because they saw Trump in yeah. the hotel. He wasn't what he is now. Right. He he was like He's just that, a business guy then. He was that savvy business guy who was building up New York. Now, people like our main character, Jack, they didn't like Trump because the, he was gentrifying neighborhoods. Which I get that. We gotta tell this story a different way though. We gotta. Um that, and, and the fact that he was the only one that was like a real person in this whole book. Fuck. Yeah. It like, just they made up all he made up all these bands that weren't real bands but trump is real it's the only real character person in this whole book of characters it's just ridiculous yeah exactly my next line i just wanted to say it's ridiculous did you have any feelings i don't no have you not gotten my feelings yet (laughs) i just i feel like i've been very fucking clear but if i haven't here you go same where's mine on three one two three I, I honestly don't know how to end these questions. In the end, the lead singer, bass, and drummer all return for a magical final show. Right? We get a flat ending. The band breaks up. They Wait, go right that's out. how you're gonna? That's yep. what you want to talk about with the ending? No, 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 no. no, 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 no. I'm not done. Okay. done. Okay. Uh, well, that's this is the end of the book. So no, we got to go back. Okay, Sorry. go back. 
Let's go we back. We need then. to talk about the final show that they do. Yeah, that yeah. Okay, let's talk about the final show. Okay. So their lead singer who has been missing. Bennett. Yeah. He's the the drug addict who's been missing and he was stabbed in the heart. Stole the base and mm-hmm. got stabbed by Trump's goon. Right. Who's because got a weird, who's who's got a woman's name, Heidi. And he didn't get stabbed because he did anything wrong or related to drugs. It was because his dad was a minority and was a builder who wasn't working for Trump. Exactly. So, and wouldn't like follow the line. So he gets stabbed and they think he's dead, but turns out he's not dead. He's alive. So he's in the hospital. And they all, like, leave him because he's like, go do the show. Go the without show me. Must, the show must go take, on, man. Take Dill. Punk Dill will be fine. Punk Dill. rock must rule. And Dill, so, by the way, Dill's just some, like, 19-year-old yuppie kid who works at a record shop. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen, um, oh, fuck, what's that movie called? Empire Records? Yeah. Fucking love Empire Records. He's the guy that tries to rub, rub, rob the store. Yes. Warren. Yes, that's Warren. Absolutely. So anyway, um, this book had Empire Record vibes, but it, it was not nearly as good. But it's same no. scene, same scene. Um, okay. If you want so, a book that's Empire Records? It's not this fucker. It's not this book. Um. All right. So they go and do the show, mm-hmm. and their first song is just awful because. Terrible. The sound check was better. Their sound check was the better. sound check was better, but they didn't have like a plan. No, they just kinda- and then they play the first song, and then out of fucking nowhere, oh, in fuck his yeah. motherfucking hospital gown with his ass hanging out, our lead singer guy just shows up. He jumps on stage and he's like, "Yeah, we're gonna do this." Oh. So then he proceeds, and here is another time I gagged. He proceeds to take off. But his now, hospital gown and begins pulling his stitches out, opening his wound. I think he was stabbed in the gut. Right. So he's pulling his stitches out, and like his guts are just like falling out, and he's right. bleeding everywhere. Or maybe it was his chest. I don't remember. Everything was like gushing blood, and he's just playing and rocking away and singing. <laughs> he passes <laughs> out. He passes out. Okay, and they're like, oh, fuck, well, we probably should keep going because that's <laughs> logical. Right, rock and roll. Rock must go on. So they finish the song, and our dude comes to, stands up, sticks his dick in someone's mouth, <laughs> who's in the front row, and then pees on the audience. And they love it. And then they're- continues to play. They think this is rock and roll. What the actual fuck? (laughs) People think that's rock and roll, man. People think that's fucking rock and roll. But, like... And then we go straight to that flat-ass... He pulled his stitches out. Then we go to that flat-ass ending. That should have been the ending. But instead... What do we do? We fast forward to that fucking snowstorm of 94. Do you remember that snowstorm? We got fucking Mm -hmm. snowed in. We got snowed in that snowstorm. And we fast Mm -hmm. forward to that snowstorm. And like everyone's just living. A tree fell on my house during that snowstorm. Really? Mm -hmm. Really? Went through my bedroom window. I happened to be sleeping downstairs. Having like a sleepover with my siblings. But it went through my bedroom window. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That was like. My dad had one of those big. Uh, vans like those huge carrier vans you know the the kidnapper ones Mm -hmm. it was like navy blue and the snow was up past that van it was Mm -hmm. wild i was in fourth grade so it was amazing i just dug tunnels i definitely could have died that year but i didn't um so we end with this really flat ending right the band spread out you know what it was what it was the um the Breakfast Club yeah. ending. Whether you are the jock, the princess, the blah, blah, blah. The stoner. The blah, blah, blah. Yeah. That's what it was. We have to wrap it up. Listen, if your work. book is only this thick, if your book is only 
I don't think the ending helped. Did you? If your book is only 210 Ten pages. pages, you 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 don't you don't need you don't need that on the end. No. I, I don't need I don't need an epilogue. You should have ended at the rock show, period. They didn't become famous. No. They basically broke up because dude went to rehab and other dude moved across the country. To become a librarian? I mean, solid Valid. plan. I mean, if Valid. he would have gone to Cleveland, he could have been the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame librarian. But anyway, nice. I digress. Um, th what the fuck? What the fuck? Okay, so now I want to talk about the TikTok side of this. Cool? I have a whole long question. Oh, Sure. Um, I want to talk, talk talk about TikTok and its influence influence on us as books, as as readers in general yeah. now. But um, we are also we are also content creators in the book world. Right. So we are book talkers and bookstagrammers. Our podcast is on both platforms, and we make content too. Yeah. Um. So this book was recommended by a TikToker whom I've liked and followed for several years now. You're gonna have to dump that guy. Um, I won't say who. I'm not done. Hold on. Let me finish. Right. Um, so I started dig digging through their pictures, like their videos to see if I could find the video so I could tag it. And I like looked at the date from my screenshot and the video was gone. So my theory is, is this person was paid to review it before they actually physically read it, which has happened. It is a problem on yes. TikTok right mm -hmm. now. It has been a or huge... he got it. He got it on NetGalley before it was published, yep. and was paid to review it that yep. way as well. Yep, and didn't read it beforehand because a lot of times they are given these books with a review in hand and are supposed to just read it. Mm -hmm. My theory is is that person was paid to review it before reading it, and after reading it, realized how terrible it was, or how it didn't match their content, or whatever it was, and removed the video. But the bigger problem for me is. When it comes to book influencing, mm -hmm. when does authenticity and honesty matter more than being the first person to really comment on a new release? So I'm going to use Heather from Bookables since we right. had her on our show this month. Our Heather's first our episode friend. of the She's season. She's a bestie. I actually saw her today. She was Hi, in Heather. the library and we were chatting. So I actually saw her three times this week. Hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah her content her channel's been together she's been doing it for 10 years yeah um and she gives legit reviews yes um she actually has a really great video i'll link it in the um description Diddly -diddly. she has a really great video of authors that she doesn't read any longer that she used to like and i'm gonna share this even though one of those authors is john green oh and we know how much i love john green yeah um but uh, she said he's not an author she reads anymore because that was a time in her life that he was somebody she enjoyed reading. But that isn't the type of books that she enjoys reading now. This is the authenticity that we have. Yeah. We have never shied away from negative comments. We have had authors on our show, Chezzy, who keeps coming back. We're and we tell Chessie. her, We're we tell her the issues that we've had. As a matter of fact, she wanted to come on our show after she heard the Eliza episode. Because she liked our honesty. She liked our honesty. And we've had the opportunity to read two of her novels as arcs. And we never give away the ending in those books. If you're well, an we author. We were honest and with her about those right. off camera. And she liked our honesty. Oh, we were, on, we were honest with her on camera, too. We told yeah. her. This book had a little bit of a slow start for me. Right. And, and I struggled with the second one and she knew that. Yeah. But in the end, when we saw what it was, what it was all coming together, we're like, oh my gosh, this is brilliant. Right. We don't blow smoke. No. And that is what has made our pod something I enjoy being part of. Same. The authenticity that we have. Our now, honesty. Now, would I love it if somebody was paying us to do reviews? I fucking would. Hashtag we are still coffee. hashed on. Hashtag not sponsored. not sponsored, but, but we're not. I, we're I, not going to throw it away, though, Molly. I wouldn't I'm let not, us. Do I would that. never. I mm -mm. would never. I don't do lies and. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm. I don't even. I wouldn't even give you a good review just because you're my friend. You're a liar, and you know you would. 
No, I wouldn't. You I would give at least you, give me three stars. I give you reviews based on how you are doing. And I have always enjoyed your books. Thank you. And your your one that you were writing, the, the sci-fi one, uh -huh. the dystopian one, I was like, hey, this part doesn't make sense. You're like, oh, yeah, you're right. It doesn't. Right. That was a good book. I, I just need to fix it. I don't want to fix it. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not going to be the person no, to shy No, you with. never bullshit. I that's don't why, bullshit. But I don't friend, bullshit either. A friend from church actually sent me. So he's actually a published author already mm -hmm. of a children's book series. And he sent me a novel that he's been working on. And he wanted me to read it. And I haven't read it yet. But before I agreed to read it, I asked him, what are you looking for from me? Because if you're looking for me to give you a pat on the head, don't send me that shit. Because mm -hmm. I won't. I read things with the lens of somebody who professionally reads books. And that's what you do. And I read them as a writer. Mm -hmm. As a writer, I don't get this book. I, I don't, don't get know this where book. he came from. I don't know. I can't get in his shoes. I can't even get in his headspace. No, but him narrating the book, um, I kept picturing this guy, the actual author, about 30 years younger. It just, I feel it like feels, that is what he looked like. It just feels but, like Molly, we have I'm done we have, actually I'm done wasting breath on this book. No, no, no. I want to say something else that's not about this book. Okay. We have had about a 50-50 shakeout from books that have been recommended to us yep. through book talkers and book um mm -hmm. book bookstagrammers. We've had about a 50-50. We've yeah. pulled some things We've pulled some things that really were not good, and we pulled some things that ended up being really good. Like the Fine Print series, for example. We oh, love no, that was, Fine Print. That was recommended to you in Barnes & Noble. Hang yeah, on, that let was. me see. Um, um, what was the book talk book? Well, first of all, I had never heard of Allie Hazelwood or uh, yeah. Emily Henry, and uh, they both came across our, our feeds when we Olivia first started- Day? We got yeah. to give you a day on socials. Um, the Gunkle. Ooh, Legends Ugh. and Lattes. Legends and Lattes. Legends and Lattes. Top, top. So but we, we've also had some real stinkers from there. Right. Like, I don't dig A Court of Thorn and Roses. Oh, Ekatar is not me. Yo. I do. Oh. But also, Ice Planet Barbarians. I didn't like that, but you did. I didn't. It was did? stupid. No, I didn't mm. like it. Mm. Mm -mm. No, sir. No, sir. it was it was Weird. I mean it was just fucking like yeah I need a story more descriptions I need um, a story. anything um, else final thoughts well we are reading um in November we are reading a book that did come across the tiki talkies and the instagrammies and that's fourth wing which has gotten a massive blow up which I want to actually my friend Valerie, hi Valerie, she's from my All Souls friend. Um, she keeps messaging me about reading this and she's like, uh, Molly, Fourth Wing. And she's like, this, this. I'm like, I haven't read it yet. I haven't read well, it. Well, we are reading read it, it for, we are reading it for November. And I thought it was just supposed to be a duology and the second one was coming out. It, well, the, I thought it was just a duology and the second one was actually coming out um, this fall sometime, maybe in November. November. But it turns out it's going to be a seven book series. So <laughs> I don't have in space in my life for a seven book series. Shut the fuck up and just do it. All right. So can I, I love you too. Can I read my Goodreads review to everyone? Absolutely. I would love your Goodreads. Okay. So any housekeeping too? Hmm? Did you got any housekeeping for the pod? Oh, yeah. We've got to talk about next month's books. Oh, yeah. That. Okay. I guess we're so going to read next month, guys. We have to. Chessie's coming. I'm excited for that. Okay. Me too. I gave the book on Goodreads one star because they require you to give at least one star. My review is, I hated this book. Zero out of five stars. Seriously, that's all she wrote. That's all I wrote. It's, I hated this book. Enter. Zero, zero out of five. five. Zero point five slash. Five. No, zero slash five stars. No <laughs> stars. I gave him no stars. Oh, I thought you gave it a half star. No stars for you, sir. No stars for you. All um, right. You want to talk about next month? Yeah, I ain't got none of them books. Okay. All right. So I don't have all the books either, 
So we're going to have to have Tom insert some pictures. So, baby, I'm sorry. Here. If you want Here. me to look them up, Here. I'll look Here. them up for you. I mean, I will, too. Just tell me what you um, want. So n next week, the first book of the month, we're doing um, The Undertaking of Heart and Mercy by Megan Bannon. And this was, is a fan suggestion. I was told it's the lake house meets obituary. Um, it's more like you've got mail meets um, the Adams family or maybe uh, Beetlejuice. Hmm. Okay. Well, I would like that. I love Beetlejuice. It, you just read it. I'm about halfway through it. So that's the first book of the season. That is a fan Ooh, suggestion. Season. So sh nope. Fuck you. <laughs> first book of the month um that is a fan suggestion from Alyssa. so shout out to Alyssa. Alyssa. um and the next book is 13 by steve cavanaugh just put that right here i don't have that one um it's i'm listening not, to the audiobook not 13 reasons why 13 mm -mm, it's 13 and it's by steve cavanaugh because apparently there are a shit ton of books that are labeled 13, 13. so there is um, uh, then we, we have, have Chessy on for, <laughs> Bessie Chessy's coming back, Bessie Chessy. For October 17th, and we're going to read this book, What Lies in the Woods. Can you see that? I, I can. It's kind of shiny, but we got it. What, what Lies, Lies in the, the Woods Wood. by Kate Alice Marshall. Was it, that was a Chessy pick, wasn't it? No, no, no. Um, it was my pick oh, right, because right, I right. knew we were going to do, um, Spooky Ooh. reads, and this is one that I found on a list on Goodreads. I think. Um, oh it no! Doesn't. I it was in an article of oh. like good read, good reads to for this fall Spooky or something. Season. Yeah, yeah. So I put it on for that, and mm -hmm. then um, we're gonna do a flicker in the dark by Stacy Willingham. I don't have that one, so it's I right here. Either. It's supposed I, to be really good. I don't even know what that one's about, but put it right here. And then the last book of the month is called Wilder Girls. That goes right here. And that is a YA horror book. And I picked that one, too, from a list of horror books. And I picked it because it was on the same list as the um, Mary Shelley Club. Mm. I almost put... And we enjoyed that one last yes, season. Yes, we did. So. Um, I almost put Slewfoot on, but it's extreme horror, and I know how you feel about it. But I won't sleep. I know you won't, and that's why I didn't put it on. But, but you know what we can do next year, hmm. next season seven, if you want to do a horror book, then I just won't do that episode with you, and you can just bring on Chessie. somebody to do it. Or make Tom do it, or somebody. Not I'll Tom. He Tom won't will... read it. I mean, he doesn't hate horror or anything like that. He probably would... But I don't. I don't think the world needs an episode that's up just the two of you. What do you mean? I, that might be hilarious. I feel like it wouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> She's like very it, concerned. If you I can't like see her face, you I should like see her face. Headache. You should see her face. She is very concerned about leaving Tom and I alone, unattended for a whole episode. They would kill each other. Like you virtually guys would kill each other. Mm -hmm. We're just like shaking the cameras. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, I have nothing else. Yeah, I don't either. Um, we made a whole episode. Yeah, we uh, managed to fill content when there was no content. So look at us pulling shit out of our asses since 2021. <laughs> <laughs> All right, besties, we have enjoyed our time with you today. We hope to see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you for joining us on Book Besties. Don't forget to like and subscribe. The views discussed here are those of April and Molly and not those of anyone else. Today's book was No One Left to Come Looking for You by Sam Lipsight. Your book besties are Molly Biggs and April Watkins. Editing by Thomas Watkins and music is Sleep Sweetly by Prigida. Don't forget to follow the book besties on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. If you would like to contact the book besties, please email us at bookbestiespod at gmail.com or visit our website, bookbestiespodcast.com. Until next time, besties, get lost in your favorite book.